I don't know if it's intentional, but these little flutes and the panning from the stars feels very inspired and possibly paying homage to Star Wars openings. Like it has to. Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. Katana picking Chief makes their connection even sweeter. It makes us, the player, feel somewhat more special as Chief is our avatar through this world. You had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck is a really hard trait to judge in a character, and it stands to reason that no one but Cortana would have seen this in Chief as she's an AI. Of all the situations Chief succeeds in, others will praise him for his ability and determination. But Cortana can run the statistics on his chances and often can't explain how Chief is able to come out on top other than luck. And John's number is also 117. Seven being often attributed to being lucky, and the 1-1 one one being that of John and Cortana. And for those that scream, Chief's got stronger plot armor than Jon Snow in the Battle of the Bastards. There's a reason why it seems that way. How far did he fall? Two kilometers. Easy. Woo! Metric system. Can we all agree to retire the Imperial? This is my attempt, however small, to create wide sweeping change on a global level. Let's see if this is the straw to break the Imperial system's back. Could you imagine if they did kill Chief off at the start of 3 and we played as Arbiter? That would have been insane. We're not leaving him here. Yeah. You're not. But Chief is just joshing with them. There's a certain amount of theatricality John has that I swear it's because he knows he's just that big. Crazy fool. Why do you always jump? For real though, Chief stay be jumping even when the Halo game in question has fall damage. I like the new lines that show Chief's viewfinder. It took a second to get used to, but eventually just added more to my immersion. Everything checks out, Sergeant Major. Kick off the training wheels, Corporal. He's good to go. Yeah. Everyone who's anyone that's playing 3 has for sure played CE in 2. Glad Bungie recognizes this and just throws us into the fight. You know, the one that we gotta finish. Leave it to Chief being the only one to recognize the camo. Got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy. Hell yes. If anyone's gonna be able to look down on Chief, get away with saying it that, and have the players believe it, it's goddamn Keith David's Arbiter. Chief's a man of a few words and speaks mostly through his actions. Just the way he snatches the MF5 shows his distaste for working with Arbiter right now. You gotta remember, the last time Chief saw him, he was 34 numbers and a rule away from an M-rated game. Huh. Sierra is S in the NATO alphabet. So Sierra 117 is referring to S117 or Spartan 117. The more you know. If it's not glaringly obvious, I don't have many people in my life with military history and don't know much about it myself. <laughs> This is the first Halo where the co-op has the second player control a character with actual stake in the plot, that being Arbiter. And when playing co-op, lines of dialogue are shifted around, such as when the Arbiter is sent to shut down the generator of the Covenant to reflect this change. Let's not forget how amazing this game looked back when it first came out. Being the first Halo using the 360 hardware is quite the monumental jump. And even now today, holds up astoundingly well, which I mostly attribute to the stellar art style and the lighting. Normally motion blur makes me sick and just looks tacky, but Bungie handles it really well in 3. I wasn't even mad I couldn't turn it off in the menu. Kiss my ass. <laughs> these little interactions, or vignettes as Bungie describes them, are scattered all around Halo 3. Having these little scenes start in a scripted manner, then branch out depending on what we do, really helps transform combat encounters from shooting galleries to living, breathing combat environments. Did you sacrifice me to complete your mission? Could you watch me die? These little Cortana bits and later with the Gravemind have a small group of haters. I don't really mind them as more story is always welcome to me. Sure, it can shut down the pacing of combat or traversal, and I'll admit it does get taxing when the Gravemind won't stop yelling at you and Cortana, but would you rather possibly miss a bit of dialogue because you're in the middle of a firefight or deal with these five second snippets? I know my answer. I will help you sprint. No one could ever denounce the heart that Johnson had. Can only imagine if he was a part of the Spartan 2 program and not just one. What's the best new weapon introduced in Halo 3 and why is it the gravity hammer? And let me not forget to mention equipment. It's something we definitely take for granted now in more modern tiles, but at the time it was such a welcome addition. Different types of equipment such as the bubble shield, deployable cover, and the grab lift all add onto the wonderful sandbox that Bungie mastered in this game. More on this in a bit. But let's talk about why they really added equipment. Just to have this dope ass trailer shot. Did anyone else watch the trailer edit with Last Resort playing over it? I never played Halo but a few times as a kid, but boy am I telling you how badass that trailer edit is. And badass is a word I'll be using quite a bit to describe this game. Sorry. No way. A Spartan? For real. <laughs> Poor guy. I love that Halo doesn't take itself super seriously all the time. Let him know. You are all of you vermin. 
cowering in the dirt, thinking, what, I wonder. So truth is different from the calculated one we see in 2, but I'm going to attribute this stark change in personality to him finally being so close to his goal. Both the other prophets are dead and he's in complete control. Couple this with the stress of High Charity falling to the flood and the elation he must be feeling over finding the Ark, I don't think it's a stretch to say that all of this has gone to his head. Chucky bastard just loves to run his mouth. See what I mean? Does he usually mention me? Oh, stop being so humble, Chief. Hey, open up! Password, please! You gotta be kidding me, what password? The password so we don't open the door for brutes. Do I sound like a brute to you? Well, you could be held prisoner by brutes. If I was held prisoner by brutes and knew the password, then the brutes could just force me to tell you the password and you'd open the door for them. Okay, well now I'm definitely not gonna open the door. But we need ammo! Well, why don't you go ask your brute buddies then? This is my absolute favorite of the vignettes that I found. See what I'm talking about with Halo not taking itself seriously all the time? Chief, get back to the op center. Kill those brutes. Rearm the bomb. Don't you think the Covenant would have learned their lesson about their bombs being close to Chief? <laughs> These beeps are consistent with the beeping we heard in the Pillar of Autumn. There will be a great deal of hardship on the road ahead. Interesting use of the words hard and ship. Considering your relationship with Chief, if you guys know what I mean. I am in love with how distinct each of the faction's vehicles are. We've got the traditional military-themed vehicles for the UNSC, the slick and smooth, very alien Covenant, and then the new brute vehicles, like the chopper here. One glance at any of these, and you're able to identify immediately which faction they belong to. And the brute's vehicles perfectly match the personalities of being strong, tough, well, brutes, with their spiked iron qualities and unfinished metal paint, if there's any at all. Interestingly enough, if you look closely at the Prowlers, you can notice that it was inspired by an anglerfish. The more you know. And does the chopper remind anyone of these? The music never fails to know how to loop perfectly, and they cut out just as you finish your last objective to progress. I don't know how developers manage to do this, but it impresses me every time. Remember how scripted and, in Bungie's own words, shit, the Scarab fight was in Halo 2? Well, they really outdid themselves by throwing one at us and just saying, Figure it the fuck out. Which is why Halo 3 was so badass then and now. It's that sandbox encounter design that makes Halo 3 so monumental. Halo 2 had some open-ended combat arenas along with CE, but none of those even hold a candle to the ones here in 3. We get so many different options to tackle each Scarab encounter. I streamed my playthrough of Halo 3, and I saw you guys commenting that even 14 years later, you've never seen someone take on the Scarabs the way I did. These arenas are truly a choose-your-own-adventure book in the best way possible. And how pretty. Who knew death and destruction could be so glorious? Well, probably a lot of people throughout history, so moving on! I am your shield. I am your sword. This feels like a slant callback to the line Halfjaw spoke to Arbiter in his first mission. We are the arm of the Prophet's Arbiter, and you are the blade. I only connect these two because the line comes right after Arbiter shows up. All ships, fire at will. I don't care who the f*** you are, if this doesn't fill your head with dopamine and serotonin, we can't be friends. This sh is so f badass and hype, I am swearing and using pointless words to try to explain how awesome this scene makes me feel. Like, this is what Halo is all about right here. I don't think there's another video game out there that can match Martin O'Donnell's Halo score for what it's trying to accomplish. Please, I'd like to see you try. You catch that? Just as the Forerunner ship takes off, we get a glint of Cortana in our heads, preluding the arrival of the Flood ship. Let you know, the Grave Mine is using Cortana's form against Chief and is just having a little fun. We knew the Flood was trying to restart and take over the Autumn and CE, but actually seeing them operate a ship makes them way more frightening. The updated engine alongside the new hardware finally got to make the Flood exactly as their name said. Just a wave of infested creatures descending upon you. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by them and finally feel scared just out of the sheer numbers they have. I can see it crawling, sliding around beneath their skin. Oh. And, then, and then they got- Let me know what you guys did with this poor soul. 
Fighting alongside elites as chief will never get old. Do not be afraid. Reclaimer. This little shithead. I must act quickly. At least he kills the guy behind Chief as somewhat an olive branch. Again, Chief's body language speaks volumes. And you, shipmaster, just glassed half a continent. Were it not for the Arbiter's Council, I would have glassed your entire planet. I love this scene. Just because they have a common enemy doesn't erase the 28 years of conflict between them. <laughs> that elite is like, the f*** you doing? And Johnson doesn't even blink an eye. And then we see Arby doing the same thing. Seeing this truce on full display like this is just so, so cool. Even if the scene lends to Arbiter being somewhat sidelined to the same level of importance as Johnson when he was basically the leading man of Halo 2, it's fine, but makes me kind of sad for Arbiter. But Johnson's awesome, so it's okay. But also, look at the unspoken respect between these two, moving ever so slightly to not bump each other. The two sides are still a bit at odds working together, but this one action from these two is sure enough, well, enough to let the lower marines and elites know what's up. As much as I hate Spark, you can't deny his comedic time. Shipmaster, they outnumber us three to one. Then it is an even fight. And I swear this is a reference to the opening of Revenge of the Sith after Obi-Wan and Anakin join the battle. The composition is just way too similar to be a coincidence. Just another win for the stellar score. This moment would not be what it is without this track. With all this armor rolling around and the battle lines drawn, Halo 3 is able to make these combats feel so grandiose. I'm so sad that I was a PlayStation kid growing up. Missed out on all this with the wonder mind of a child. This chieftain, if you don't just murk him right away like I did, or anyone else, he'll actually challenge you to one-on-one -on -one combat and the other brutes will oblige. Roger that, Hocus. Get out of there. The Spartan laser is badass. That is all. Good work, Chief. That's one. The Arbiter should be just about to- That's two! Oh, f yeah. One can always count on Arbiter, and two? Love that he's constantly tit-for-tat with Chief. Bungie asks himself when designing this level, what could be even cooler than fighting one Scarab? Johnson gets captured like 14 times during the Halo trilogy, and it never once hampers his spirit or makes us think less of him. That is when you know you got a, dare I say, badass character. Since I've been talking about references to other movies, how about this one? Do it. Now. This is why Johnson is such a badass. Willing to do whatever it takes, but damn did this scene make my heart break. And I barely know keys. Once again, O'Donnell is doing so much heavy lifting. A video game score at this time had no reason being able to match the likes of high budget films, and Halo really pushed the boundaries on what's expected from score in video games. Your forefathers wisely set aside their compassion steal themselves for what needed to be done. I see now why they left you behind. But also why they only allowed themselves and humans to activate the rings, because of our compassion. Chief's love and trust in Cortana is what saves the galaxy in the end. And once again, Chief's body language, not willing to waste a second and get up there to save Johnson while Arbiter calmly walks. Let me lead you safely to our foe. Only you can hunt what he has set in motion. I was cheering when this moment happened. The Gravemind did say they would be brothers in Halo 2, and nothing brings two beings together more than fighting side by side. And from someone that knew nothing about Halo going into these, all the truces and alliances blew me away. I have no idea how I avoided spoilers all these years. I am truth, the voice of the Covenant. So, you must be silenced. Ah! A fate you must abide. You know Dream. I love me some sinner framing! What do you see? Though the Gravemind has most control over Katana, it's so neat that she's still fighting and guides Chief to show him her plan.
Bungie uses the Halo theme all the time when cool shit is happening, but it will always give me goosebumps when it's just the choir over the ring itself. A technique used like crazy in Star Wars and many other films was to use matte paintings to create a ginormous landscape, which is exactly what we got here with a couple 3D elements on top. We exist together now. Two corpses in one grave. Am I sad that we never got a final encounter in 3 with the grave mine? Absolutely. But it's not really necessary for the story to take him head on. The heart of the matter here is the bond between Chief and Cortana and saving the entire galaxy from the flood. And ending this level with a climactic fight would just muddy that water. And also the fact that technically there is no killing the grave mind unless you destroy the whole flood, so killing a giant tentacle worm would just be gratuitous grander for its own sake. And running through High Charity now, as it's completely overtaken, is a great way to show just how horrible the flood spilling across the galaxy truly would be. We've been told many times that it's not good, but to see it firsthand is a whole nother thing. Compounding that with a location we're familiar with, we know what this place used to look like, and now it's barely even recognizable as High Charity. This is UNSC AI serial number CTN 0452-9. I am a monument to all your sins. Remember when Gravemind said that in Halo 2? This is pretty much telling us that Cortana has finally lost strength to hold Gravemind at bay. But no worries, because we're like, right there. You found me. Well, I couldn't leave my best girl. When I make a promise. You keep it. Crying callback. I do know how to pick them. Lucky me. Flirting! A little souvenir I hung on to, just in case. Jesus Christ, I'm tearing up watching this scene. That piano might as well be their love things. things. Thought I'd try shooting my way out. Mix things up a little. <laughs> as opposed to jumping and or blowing things up. Just keep your head down. There's two of us in here now. Ah, not a line of dialogue wasted, just like in Halo 2. The callbacks at the end of this game are so numerous, it's beautiful. Bungie really thought they were going to wrap up Halo with this game. Ah! Last I see, the secret is revealed. Me, after people told me not to eat the spicy stuff and I'm stuck in the toilet for six hours. At last I see, the secret is revealed. And the big secret Cortana was keeping from the grave mind, I believe, was Chief. This whole time she was protecting everyone by protecting her best boy. And Arbiter, the absolute mad lad, came back for his best boy. Huh, yeah. Bungie beat me to what the win was gonna be. Coming back to where it all started. Bookends will forever be a win and never a sin. Yank me, Chief. With pleasure. And another callback. The installation is almost complete. Terrific. Yes, isn't it? I think Spark and Drax would get along quite well. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Well, if you wanted us to hate Spark again, that's one way to do it. If you caught my stream, you'd remember my jaw was on the floor when this happened. I like that Captain safe. It belongs to me. Why am I getting so emotional? It's like Johnson's the only other person that understands their connection. And I think I'll understand why when my Reach video comes out. Send me out. Rest in peace, Johnson, one of the OG Spartans. We'd expect and want nothing more than for you to go out with a bang. I am sorry, Spartan. Even Harvey is sorry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the most iconic Halo mission ever. I haven't played them all yet, but I know. I've played sporadic missions of Halo here and there as a kid, and this run is the only mission I ever remember playing. If that doesn't speak volumes to how badass this last level is, I don't know what will. What's even more nuts about this hog run is that it's the exact same layout as the island for the silent cartographer mission in Combat Evolved. This is a remake of Installation 4, after all. Got it, Chief! Jump! For it! Right into the hangar! We all know if Chief can do anything. It's jump. Just when we and then thought it was over, nope, still going down. No words needed. These two badasses have the utmost respect for one another. And dare I say, care a bit about each other? Chief didn't need to check on Arbiter here, but did nonetheless. 
I know I've already done it once, but you know I love me some center framing. Especially when everything in frame is pinnacle halo. Chief, Cortana, and a halo ring going off in the background. It's shots like these that remind you how passionate Bungie was for creating this game and going out on a high. We don't make it. We'll make it. And once again, another callback between these two. For those like me that hadn't read The Fall of Reach, this is the first time that we ever learned Chief's name. And how cute that it's coming from Katana at the end of all things for them. Nice to see that some traditions never die. Part of the lane is dead. Were it so easy. Chills. Chills across my whole body. And he's calling back to the line he used about himself when Chief threatened him at the start. Now reason to just show the amount of respect and camaraderie the two men now share. Also, Arbiter was the only one that showed up to honor the dead humans. He wasn't there for just Chief, but Keys, Johnson, and every other life lost. I would like to see To know that it is safe. Fear not. For we have made it And he's not just talking about the covering. And though he's only been reported MIA, there is a bitter sweetness to seeing him honored here at the Hillside Memorial and what I believe to be respect shown for him by not digging up a picture of his face, even if it's not a huge secret among you and Essie. Wake me when you need me. You thought you'd get a Halo video without me winning Steve Downs Master Chief? Absolutely not. So, so bittersweet. I'm searching for words to describe the feeling this ending had. It's, it's just so perfect. Everything tied up nicely to cap off the trilogy, and though everyone else gets a happy ending, John and Cortana don't exactly. We end just as we started, and cryosleep waiting to be called upon as an instrument of war. And that's the part that gets me, because we know how much these two care for each other, but John knows his limitations and what he was made for, so he accepts his duty and responsibility and heads to sleep for what could be the rest of his life. And that was it. I remember when I first finished it, my... I was just stunned. I was just looking at the screen, not knowing what to do with myself now. It's like finishing a great book. Granted, now we've got like five more games to play and see how the story continues, which I can only be excited for, no matter how good or bad people say those games are. More Chief on Cortana is enough for me right now. Halo 3 has its critics, but I view it as the perfect meld between Combat Evolved and 2. Bungie took everything they had learned and what the fans liked and made the perfect ending to a gaming trilogy. Not just story-wise, but in every department. Music, characters, gameplay. Not one bit of Halo 3 was not an upgrade from the first two games. It's not common to have a trilogy in any media be this tight and perfect. Not even the original Star Wars trilogy can say that. Fight me on this, I dare you. Return of the Jedi is good, but Han Solo should have died at the end of Empire. Oh, <laughs> spoilers. Anyway, between the generation-defining gameplay, music, story, and characters, Bungie created one of the best games ever that defined an entire generation of gamers. I envy those of you that took this ride as the games were released, and I can only hope and pray that another series comes along to define this current generation. There are more games in the franchise, but no one and nothing can take away the impact this trilogy had on so many people and dare I be so pretentious and say not. the world. I hope you all enjoyed the video and thank you for taking this ride with me. Whatever your criticisms are on my take on Halo 3 and how I use this format to structure my thoughts, I hope for at least this video we can all agree to reminisce and share our experiences down below and remind ourselves that no matter what I say or didn't, for at least this video, one way or another, Halo has brought us all together here on this platform, and that should be celebrated. Remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and most importantly, love one another with all your heart. Pizza.